Welcome to the AEW Dynamite Review. We are the Dadly Boys of What Culture. I'm Adam Wilborn, joined by Michael Hamlet and Michael Sidgwick, here to review everything that happened on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube, yeah. where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review AEW Dynamite, but also AEW Collision, Raw Smackdown, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh! Pay per views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a roundup of the week complete with well, a quiz, of course, on Wrestle Coach. As I said, they're joined by Hamlet and Sidgwick to review last night's Dynamite, the go home show ahead of Double or Nothing. Yes, core problems remain. Those core problems will never go away. There was one segment of this show that was pure weapons grade wrestle crap. <laughs> but yesterday, this time yesterday, I was like, eh, Double or Nothing will be really good. Mm. It'll probably be great. On the night. As I sit here this morning, I'm like, I'm really quite looking forward to yeah. this. They've juiced it up considerably. So I was happy with last night's show. I'm trying to, so, unless it's the obvious, I'm trying to cycle through the thing that's wrestle crap. So I'm excited to get to that. You kidding? Well, hopefully. I think just, I know what it is. Hopefully we're just thinking of the same thing. Yeah. But like, if it's not him, is it him? I don't think it we'll is. We'll get to it. This is exciting. I had a load of fun watching this show. That really was fun. Well, that's the thing. Great. Fun. Yeah. Not like proper emotional investment, wrapped anticipation, but it was just a blast. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's been it's been a while uh, since you know. I know obviously we all watch it, but like other people come into the office, whether it be Scott Telford of What Culture Gaming, What Culture Gaming podcast, wherever you get your podcast from, or Phil Chambers, um, and you're like, uh, have you seen? Have you seen this? Did you see what happened? Did you see what happened at the end of Dynamite? And if they haven't seen it and they don't mind, you know, seeing it in a weird order. I'm yeah, like, Scott didn't want spoilers. No. And you just did it in front of Phil anyway. Yeah. But that, is your, <laughs> Scott was, but that means, did he? But Scott that means was, you're excited. Scott was out of the room when I did it. I was okay. like, that. I'm not that. I'm not that Shan. Well, at least not that on that occasion. Um, but yeah, I was like, Phil, you have to see the final shot of, of Dynamite because... It was awesome. It was, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> but we'll, as you say, we'll get to that in due course because the show opened um, with Roddy Strong and Trent Beretta versus Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay. Uh, Don Callis there on commentary saying that Cassidy's now one of his guys. <laughs> yeah. No, he isn't. But <laughs> well, it's funny that he would say that and think that. That is a newt out, isn't it? Any newt. Always, always taking newt. Yes. Um, so early on, um, Beretta tries to pile drive Cassidy on the steps, but Osprey makes the save and it all breaks down. Uh, Beretta hitting Osprey with a spear to take us to a break. When we come back, uh, Strong and Cassidy are both down, and Cassidy does his hands in his pockets, sort of scooch over to the corner to bring Osprey, who obviously comes in house of fire stuff from him. Um, Strong gets trapped in the corner, cheeky Nando's kick, sky twister press off the second, uh, and Cassidy just falls comedically on top of uh, Roddy Strong. Beretta Beretta puts a stop to all that, though. Uh, he tries to do the release superplex spot thing, but of course, Osprey lands on his feet. Oh my god! Uh, and Cassidy flies in with a top rope DDT. Um, Beretta runs distraction for the ref. They're trying to get rid of the top turnbuckle. Uh, Strong hits a sick kick on Cassidy, um, but Don Callis jumps off commentary, grabs Cassidy's legs so he doesn't get uh, sent into the end of heartache. Cassidy comes back as a result of that with the Stun Dog Millionaire. Osprey hits the Oz Cutter. Uh, Bennett and Taven try and jump in. They get sent to the outside. Strong's got the ref at this point. Osprey takes out the kingdom with a dive, but here comes Wardlow to just run him down. Beretta hits a knee strike on Cassidy, and Strong hits the end of heartache to pin Cassidy. Post match, the Undisputed Kingdom batter Osprey. Uh, whilst Beretta is beating down Cassidy on the ramp, Osprey gets hit with the title. Um, Beretta runs off Callis and chokes out Cassidy while Strong holds the inter international title uh, in the face of a bloodied Will Ospreay. And there's another end of heartache just to, just to rub it in, Sitch. Yeah, uh, one flaw on this, right, before I go pretty crazy and effusive with my praise. I, I'm not usually a blood nerd, right? I'm not like, you know, time and place every week. Yes. <laughs> I just like it. I'm a blood freak, if anything. I didn't need it this week. Will Ospreay needed to take his aspirin. I don't even think he went coast to coast enough. There was barely any blood. Um, and you've just seen it from Swerve last week. This felt a little bit like, oh, last minute homework. Felt like a tick box of how can we get this that bit more over. Mm -hmm. Oh, the wrestle craft. Sorry, yeah. God, what was I thinking? It's just, it's just hitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus blood. Christ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it so it's so like, good. what can we do? Like a checklist of things to do for a go home angle to like. Juice up interest, right? Blood tick. Didn't feel like, oh, God, Osprey's bleeding profusely. 
and he's wobbly and I'm a bit scared. No, I didn't get that feeling whatsoever. I'm surprised you said that. I wouldn't think you'd say tick. I'd think you'd say uh, check. <laughs> check. He's got a boo boo on his forehead. <laughs> I will say, we forward. I will say that I thought this was a magnificent segment of television. High hopes for this, and it delivered, didn't it? Match X angle development. Like this is <clears throat> deft oh, bit of booking. Been a while. Been a while. On the part of Tony Khan here, this was so relentless. This had proper, like the feeling AEW energy. You had this really great TV match, great, genuinely great, and then all of the outside activity. I thought was not overkill because I thought the rhythm of how everything happened was great because it wasn't just, we're going to do mad stuff for the sake of it. It mm-hmm. was, we need to have the kingdom interfere just as Osprey and Strong are going a little bit too far and exploring their chemistry because you've got to save that for Sunday. So it just felt like just when it was really getting going, right here come the kingdom. Then, oh, hang on, Osprey's just done some insane dive on both of them. And our oh, Christ, here's Wardlow. Didn't expect him. Mm. One of the, a weird byproduct of people of this completely bloated rotating cast. So you kind of forget about people. It's like, oh, ah, Wardlow. Yeah. He just knocked his head off. And then he get oh, like what's Callus doing? Saving him from that. It was just incident upon incident upon incident, but it was like all paced really, really well. It's like a, a, a pinball machine of a professional wrestling segment. And I had a I just had a really good time with it. This is the second week in a row where it just got off to this, like, almost incandescent hot, hot start, this program, this telecast. And I just, it was like, right, put your phone down. It's dynamite, put mm, your phone yeah. down. And I think it's crucial because I am a slave to my phone, as a lot of people are, you're competing with it. And I was just like, right, phone down, bang, 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 bang. Like a perfect opener, a really good bit of booking. And because it was these four guys, like the Osprey Strong stuff was like, ah. Oh, the little struggle to get to the Nando's kick. That, that's going to be special on Sunday. Yes. I was very much entertained by all of this. Yeah, like great vibes throughout, like charming from the off, really. Like the, the, the point that you've made so many times, Sidge, about Orange Cassidy and this guy, this that was like laid bare on the entrance, and yet it was still really entertaining. They played with the, like the conflicts, even mm-hmm. there was a walking out of the ring. They very so, much had, we've wrestled before, and yeah. I've said some crap, but hey, we're here. That's it. And like <laughs> Osprey doing the bit where he like, sort of like now goes to each side for the Osprey chant. And like Cassidy doing his own sort of like version of it. It's like, <laughs> there's the feeling. Yeah. That's the, like, again, it's this is not, these are basics, right? But it, it can't just be great matches and it never could. Like these were characters and stories that even if this match was bad, it was never going to be bad, look who's in there. But even if this match was bad, this was going to deliver to a point because look how invested in the characters you are at the moment. Look how both these matches that this existed to promote for Double or Nothing have been well booked and well built towards you know the Trent your mileage may vary a little bit on Trent versus Orange Cassidy but the Don Callis involvement has elevated all of it mm. like it's not just a case for of, once <laughs> it's not just a case of best <laughs> friends splitting up it's like when's you know the fixes in when's it all going to play out like this is intriguing we've never seen Orange Cassidy being sort of like dragged in this direction before meanwhile uh, Osprey and Roderick Strong is a match that books itself on account of its quality but that it's kind of been a problem with so many of AEW's like matches of late is that just because it's books itself, it doesn't mean that it should mm. book something for it. And they've done that here. They've made the Unis- Undisputed Kingdom for a night felt like they mattered. Like that that Wardlow feeling, like we like to sort of mock that Ric Flair promo from last year. Holy sh- it's Wardlow. Yeah. <laughs> like when was the last time you felt that about, about yeah. Wardlow? Yeah. yeah. It, they found that way to bring that back for the night whilst protecting something else you point out with that they didn't give away any of the Osprey strong match really by delivering a few spots between the two of them. This was, WWE made it a cliche, uh, probably around 2000 when everything was hot about like the partners that are going to fight on Sunday and they're coming together for one night only. It's effective when you're invested. Mm. That's why it, that's why nobody cared when it was every week in 2000 because yeah. it was like, I love all these characters. By 2003, I hate everybody. Yeah, so it's, it's <laughs> the especially opposite. Triple H. Yeah, it's, it's the, it has the opposite effect. No way, he's lost a tag match on Raw. Could he lose the belt on Sunday? Yeah, yeah. No, like mm. they ruined it. This was like an example of when you've got stories that are hot, put it together as much as well. There was a load of that on the show, I thought. Yeah. Like, that was why I enjoyed this. Like, this was a, like, a died in the wool, go home edition of a yes. TV show and super yes. effective for it. Absolutely. I will say one more thing on this. I loved, loved, loved uh, Orange Cassidy's, like, wholesome, vengeful update on, like, Toshiya Ikawada, his spot in those All Japan tags when he'd just be running the ropes and say, like, oh, hate you I'm gonna <laughs> knock you off the apron while I'm at it yeah. him going for Trent when yeah. he's running the ropes is fantastic 
Um, so we go backstage. The Young Bucks have got a security around them, and they've got a poster uh, of Darby Allen, a photo of him, calling him a prick, saying, look, he's banned from the arena. And they hand it out to the security and say, don't let him anywhere near the ring, obviously. Uh, in comes Sanjay Dutt, uh, talks about the Bucks taking care of FTR on collision with the righteous and what have you. Uh, I thought the same. I mean, I see a chair shot every week and they always come back. So what difference does that <laughs> one make? Uh, he says tonight his Indian giant is going to destroy the American dragon. Matt, uh, Matthew, sorry, apologies, uh, says, look, if you beat him, cool. But if you hurt him, great. Uh, and Sanjay says, look, as long as the, the money's in the envelope, um, Singh is going to break him like a pencil. And he snaps the pencil and laughs maniacally. Not the only person to laugh maniacally on this show. We will get to that. Yeah, I like Sanjay Duck colluding with the, the heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's break it. It's, just, it's good. Yeah. I was a bit distracted in this because it was like time machine stuff. You know when you see this the clip of the wrestlers that were first on TV as security guards? It's like it went backwards because there was that security guard stood right next to one of the books who looked like 2021 Kenny Omega but shrunken as security guard, like the handlebar moustache and he had the same sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That. that was good. Just thinking about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, then we get the bing, bing, ging coming out. Uh, they've now got a wagon to uh, pull all their titles. I'm into that. <laughs> to the ring. I'm into that. A wagon for the belts. Uh, Excalibur quite rightly says, well, the trio's titles are unified, so why are you doing that? And Taz says, well, yeah, well, they have to do that, otherwise what are you going to do with the wagon? Exactly. Good point. And then Excalibur said, well, don't put the wagon before. They've got a good report here. Yeah. They were, they, I will say, if you watch it on Fight Like I Do, and you can't be asked to fast forward I can't be asked to press a button. It's four, like half four in the morning, right? There's certain matches where you're like, I'm glad that I didn't mm. stop watching. Like Shabbat, I just kind of no sells it. Obviously, not his best night tonight, um, but usually it's just a long heat sequence. They were insufferable with their banter and their in jokes during the fight TV breaks. Like usually, I my mileage varies on how charming I think it is. My God, it was just really a bit much. <laughs> just a unique experience from a very early rising mm. Brit. My <laughs> God, be quiet. Um, <laughs> Don't put the wagon before the Jones. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, no, the Jones stuff, because Tony Schiavone, during one of the picture-in-pictures, which I watch in full through fight, uh, he got J a Jones wrong, and Taz just got hot. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Switchblade Jay Watt um, is, is, does a roll call of himself and fully cocked Colton Gunn and Austin and what have you. Um, but he can't he can't work out how you meant to say Pac's name. Um, but but he, he cocked? Is that because they've got Gunn in the surname? Maybe. Also because they've got big cocks that are ready to, I don't know, spunk. <laughs> oh, bang, bang, gang. Yeah, maybe. I thought it was just guns. Um, no. Mm -hmm. um, Sex havers. Yeah. Got it. Pack has been messing with things that didn't concern him. Uh, he's made a series of mistakes in recent weeks and sticking his nose in business where it doesn't belong, basically. And then Pack appears on the it's big screen. Pack, by the way. Pack. Yeah. Uh, and says, uh, well done, lads. You know, you kind of made me care. You've wound me up. But then again, three on one isn't exactly fair. So he's going to introduce them to his amigos. The lights go out and we get the full death triangle entrance. There's Penta El Zero Miedo. There's Ray Phoenix. Uh, and Pack's there, too. And they all rush down. Big brawl. Uh, gang, uh, bang, bang, gang, get beaten down. And Pac challenged them for double or nothing. Yeah, don't need to see that match at double or nothing. Um, well, it might not happen. Um, of course, they do have to win the tag match on collision. Shut up, man. Less is more. <laughs> less is more. Less is more. Less is more. Less is more. You're going to start doing this with WWE booking, by the way. Otherwise, I will kill you. Uh, <laughs> this was as basic as an angle gets, but the crowd went nuts yes. for it. And I felt something for the Death Triangle entrance. And then I saw Alex Abrahantas. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Have we not, has, have we not moved on? Do not need, as a society, to, <laughs> to move on from Alex Abrahantas. Yeah. So he offers nothing. He's a scenery-chewing glory hog, spotlight hog. He makes Jericho look like Danielson not going for the world title. On uh, unpack. To tip the wagon like the revival did to the New Day's ice cream truck that time. <sighs> what was happening? Tip it over, belts fly everywhere. Yeah, I'll take that. Be cool. I'm less interested in the match. I'm kind of with six on that. Yeah, one. like it's it's these last two editions, Jericho's match, and then this one. 
So I, if this was announced third, I'd be like, all right, okay, that's cool. But when it's announced 10th <laughs> and these pay-per-views are a, at a near monthly rate, I'm like, this is going to catch up with you. This is going to catch up with you. This is, there's a time and a place for that match, and it's next Wednesday. You still have to have yes, stuff. That's there's good no point. harm in like some angles not peaking mm. at this pay-per-view. Like like, like, again, I've made this point a million times. I'm not going to go too in-depth on it because, you know, between Levesque and Khan, you've probably got the perfect pro wrestling booker. Yeah. Mm. I don't need five matches, three of which are mid. I don't need ten matches, eight of which are goaded. Mm. A nice, happy medium yes. would be nice. Um, a luring tree hits, and Chris Jericho <laughs> and Big Bill comes down. <laughs> eh, thumbs up and finger guns and what have you. Jericho's uh, on commentary for the uh, the triple threat. Hook, uh, Katsu like Yoshiba. He thinks he's invented office space. Yeah. First of all, you haven't. <laughs> That's really Second good. of all, the Young Bucks were doing it three months ago. But yeah, Big Bill, I need you to go ahead and uh, come in at the weekend and help me try and retain the yeah, FDW yeah. title. Yeah, that's a great shout. Um, yeah, and it is a bit watered down, Bucks EVP. Stuff, yeah, it's just it? that he's doing disingenuous, but as I'll mention when he cuts the promo, he's doing it wrong. He's literally... Oh, anyway, yeah. I'll circle back to it. Like you said, you remind me. Um, Hook, Cassie Rishi Battle, Brian Keith, FTW title eliminator. The winner, or winners, uh, go on to face Jericho at double or nothing. Um, Brian Keith just leveled Hook with a big boot of the bell. Hook fires back, tries to red run, but Shibata breaks it up. Everyone gets suplexes in. Shibata fires off an F STO on Hook. We go to break, we come back. Uh, Keith hits a double underhook powerbomb on Hook, gets a two count, but Shibata makes the save. Hook hits a T-bone on Shibata. Keith gets trapped in red rum in the ropes, but Keith escapes with a headbutt. Connects on Diamond Dust, but Shibata runs in with a PK and the fireman's carrying neckbreaker. Puts him in a figure four. Hook also applies a red rum. Keith taps, and Rick Knox, the referee, declares both Hook and Shibata co-winners. <laughs> Your thoughts on that first before we get to the Jericho promo? Yeah, this match sought to answer the question that should never have been asked. Triple threat slash three-way matches are fundamentally silly. We've just become normalized to them. It's like the five-day working week, dot, 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 in any other job. <laughs> Why do you need to have five days? Why can't you have four and three? Yep. You know, it's just it's just a normalized thing. Um, they are fundamentally silly, and this was a silly version of it. First of all, in terms of the action, it was just a really lethargic and flat exchange of suplexes and nothing more. Weirdly made this, mm. like... I wasn't expecting, you know, a match of the year candidate, but my God, this was just really dull and lethargic. Have uh, You might not. The rare earnest take about NXT. Have you seen this put on NXT this week? The same three-way, two people get the win in a three-way. It's frigging the Joe Coffey one was better than the Shabbat one. I'm not doing a bit. Joe Coffey, Wesley, and Josh Briggs to get the Oberfemi match, two winners, etc. Yeah. It, it, it was better. Yeah. It was a better match. I, like, I, it was so... Mid, yeah. this, wasn't it? This like, is really, really mid, just lethargic. But the finish, which is the most important thing, was so bad. So it's like, obviously, Red Rum and the... Uh, figure four? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not only is it asked that question, answer the question that shouldn't be asked, oh, what happens if both if people apply submissions? Like, what if it happens in a title match? Cool champions. That's stupid. So how is this any less stupid? It's just daft. So not only did I hate that, but the idea <laughs> was so poorly done, right? If you are in... Agony, right? And you just you are you need to submit because the agony coursing through your veins and nerves is just so much like tap 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 tap, right? Brian Keith is almost polite. Well, this one hurts just as much as that one. Is it about fifty one forty nine? Nah, it's fifty fifty. I'm tapping for you both. <laughs> I get it. Just tap. How insulting was that? Uh, both hurts fifty fifty. <laughs> Jesus, you have both beaten me, and I'm equally hurt 50-50. It was so silly, so unbelievably silly. The fact that you have to make the conscious choice just completely undermines the like the, the idea that you're in complete agony and just have to submit. Uh, yeah, it, the rules thing bothers me. I hate it when just people just change the rules on the fly, and they do it. With it this really, really pisses me off, though. You, um, like, you made the point about a title match. I watched one this week. Uh, where like it was a triple threat with a title, with the same thing, and the ref was like, "Well, what can I do? We need to just carry on." And the contenders look like idiots as a result. So, like, if this happens to Jericho, and it probably should, because Shabbat and Hook have just found out, well, it's super effective, and the best they can do is have him tapping and screaming, and the ref then shrugs his shoulders, and then they have to just match just has to carry on, and the best they can do is weaken Jericho with it. Everyone looks, everyone looks really thick. There's a massive production gaff. 
coming in a second. That's a bit of a Daily Star boffins word, but there's a big production gaff to follow up as a result. Mate, uh, of the I pin the square on Jericho. He jumps in front of it. I jumps in front of the commentators. Get into the. Uh, we just heard from Tony Khan area and Chris Jericho on the microphone of what's been announced yeah. as the other uh, triple threat. But bad booking and stupid finishes and everybody having to be protected creates like windows for those gaffes to occur. If yeah. it was simpler, you wouldn't have it. Yeah. Yeah, Jericho, the crowd is just shouting, let him fight. Uh, Jericho takes the mic. Thanks, guys. He says that quite a lot. He's, again, like you say, he's doing It's the, just that's what Matt Jackson, Matthew yeah. Jackson yes. says. Uh, he says, uh, <laughs> I, lo- I love camera time. That's why I'm here. Uh, he's saying it quite a lot loud. Um, and he's, he's saying, oh, this is going to make my job a little bit more difficult to double or nothing. Um, he's the longest running uh, FTW champion. No, you're not. Um, but he's just getting started. It's a first ever for the world rules tr- Triple threat match for the title. Yeah, yeah. And then commentary, so, yeah. Say it, and then he's so busy trying to get his bit over that I think they were rushed and just like, play the music. This is a disaster. Get on the go out of here. So I don't know where the blame <laughs> lies. Let's just blame all of them. Let's just blame all of them. So that was terrible amateur hour and not a great look for Jericho and his entire thing, his literal raison d'etre is I'm experienced and, you know, I'm the learning tree. For him to do a total amateur hour botch like this was Quite cathartic, really, but mm-hmm. not a good look for the character and what have you. I'm not saying Chris Jericho's a complete idiot, but he can't even play dumb correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the whole idea, right, one of my least favorite things <laughs> ever, and I'm not doing the YouTube hype, it is, is when people play dumb mm-hmm. and when people are disingenuous, right? And it should be a great source for heat on that basis. Like when they're like, ah, oh, didn't mean to start this controversy. Or, ah, oh, no, <sighs> wasn't being cryptic, guys. It's like, stop it. Stop it, Dark Hallwood. <laughs> that kind of thing, like that genre of poster, and I can't stand it. So therefore, I think it's a good thing for Heat. Shouldn't Chris Jericho, right, instead of being going, oh, I love the TV time, huh? Why would he say that? Isn't the correct approach here to get on the microphone and say, and he used to do this. This used to be Chris Jericho, the thing he was good at, and say something to the effect of, guys... Just been on commentary. You know me. I, I don't really like to steal focus from the young talents, yes, uh, but yeah. the young bucks insisted that I come and do guest commentary. And, you know, I'm an old pro, so that's what I'm going to do. Isn't that the correct way? Yes, you're Why right. Why is he saying, oh, you know, I like to be on TV, haha. I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to lean in, but he's just lost the plot. Mm-hmm. He's lost the plot. Well, he, clearly you missed the bit that uh, myself and uh, Hamlet reported on earlier in this week because this was all his, his plan, actually, that he's always wanted for the fans <laughs> to chant, please retire. Uh, and go away, and so it's all part of the big. big I was just, I'm gonna guess this is happening. I'm, a, I'm an oracle. It's because, <laughs> it's because it's been happening for a month. I just made me that bit. It's when like he... predicting the winner of Kanosuke Takeshita versus Matt Sydal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So look at a genius I am. <laughs> that like that longest running for the world champion bit just made me so sad because it's just like a very very tragic parody of an awesome bit which in 2019 is Sammy Guevara going, you know Chris Jericho is the youngest AW yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time. Yes. That's the, that's the elite version of the bit. Yeah. And oh, now gee, he's just a, think he's a, he's a sad parody in a million different ways. Yeah. Mm. And Looks great on that Fozzy poster, though. I was just going to say that. Like, who who's on that poster? Because I saw Chris Jericho on Dynamite last night, and it can't be him. <laughs> Chris Jericho from 1999. Yeah. Put me through AI and make me appealing again. That didn't work. I'm not buying a ticket to that. No. <laughs> Can you name another fuzzy song other than Judas? Oh, they had one for a TNA pay-per-view. I can't... No. can't remember the name. The only one I know is because they did it for full gear 2019. Nowhere to run. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> remember when he was a uh, Mongoose McQueen and they were a parody band? Hence the name. Yeah. Fozzy Osborne. Yeah. I think he just thought, like, we're kind of the first guys to pay tribute to an act. Yeah. With the comedic slant. We should have a song called Tribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, Tenacious YTJ. Nowhere to run yet. Uh, I still burn. Purifier. Spotlight. Drinking with Jesus. Sandpaper. <laughs> and uh, eat the rich. So. Jesus, man. <laughs> Eat the rich. I'm also going to donate to. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. good point. 
I don't know, getting blasted out of a ghetto blaster on Capitol Hill. Like his wife didn't say anything. Eat the wrist. Ooh, clever that. Right. Normally, if you're going to say the sentence, so-and-so pounds there, you'd say fists, right? Fists, yeah, yeah. Pound your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. God pounds his nails, so. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, brilliant video package hyping up Willow and Mercedes. <laughs> Money. 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 Ahead of their TBS title match. Um, Did we get D-Money tized? We all right? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, we will of course talk about that on the Double or Nothing preview which will be coming away very soon mm. uh, and we get a commercial as well for the Young Bucks Reebok shoes love it yeah great video this by the way I want to I want to review this more I want to review half the matches we <laughs> talked about this video was excellent like the I said this the other week there was this Mercedes Mene promo where she was talking about all the things she was going to do such as like throwing I love uh, this contract signing video package I think AEW is going to be alright <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I think being bit, facetious. It was a really good video, yeah, I know and I think quietly, and you know, slyly, they've made this the biggest women's match in AW history. Yeah. And it's not just because it's Mercedes Monet's debut, because three weeks ago it didn't feel like this. Mm. The other week, when she said, "Oh, I'm going to throw the first pitch out. I'm attending this basketball game. I've got this premiere, that sort of thing." What they didn't dwell on was just how big the contrast was between that and Willow Nightingale uh, just defending a title, just wrestling, mm. just trying like she was going to do the rampage. Uh, like street fight she had later that night, basically the what was it, the Manitoba mayhem or something like that. The contrast was there, and they didn't really dwell yeah, upon it. Defending Stardom as well, or something. Yeah, yeah. This was that. So you saw like footage of her defending the title, contrasted with like Mandalorian stuff, and it's like these are different people that like they're on different journeys at the moment, and yet they've come together because this title means the most. Like super effective. Yeah, better than a match. Better than like Will and Nightingale. Well, I mean. That wasn't ever going to happen. It would have been a second women's match. But, like, going out there and having a match to prove a point. Now, can she prove it on Sunday? Nobody buys that. Yeah. I'll buy this. Yeah. Uh, and we also got a video package for uh, Mox versus Konosuke Takeshita. Uh, Mox said Takeshita started this game at the pay-per-view. They're going to finish it. And that led into Konosuke Takeshita versus Paul Matt Seidel. Uh, Takeshita kicked his ass. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sheer drop brain buster straight away. Um Seidel did get some offense in. He counted a blue thunder bomb into a snap hurricane Rana and a DDT. Went up top, uh, but Takeshi just avoided the dive. Hit a spinning blue thunder bomb, and Callis was like, "Kill him!" And Takeshi just did big forearm. Gets the one, two, three. Uh, but after the match, you know, bells rung. We're all, you know, we're all friends here. So he helped Seidel to his feet, and then just there's a huge release German suplex. Puts boots to him afterwards. Mocks these music hits. He jumps in, walks in. He's got a mic in his hand. And he just twatted Takeshita with the mic and said he'll see him on Sunday and left through the crowd. Yeah, good and bad here. We'll go for the bad first. Uh, the bad is that this very much, this mocks Takeshita. And yes, I do remember how awesome their late 2022 Rampage match was. They've yes. had a couple, but that late 22 Rampage one was something really special. Um, so I, I'm excited on the basis of the match will be good, but that's not good enough. This is very much the seventh, literally the seventh to eighth match added, and it underscores the big core problem that AEW will never be at its best again until this is resolved one way or another of, we've got about, we've got endless, at this point, you you would lose count at some point if you tried to list every top star wrestler in AEW that they need to protect or feel a need to protect, mm -hmm. you would lose count at this point. You'd forget a, a JY even, potentially for the future, or a dot, whatever. So you've got that crew versus the million prospects that they want to keep in the mix, but there's too many main eventers that they'll never break through at this point. Takeshita, uh, Garcia, maybe even Darby is in that group. And it's like, right, we've got star versus someone we want to be a star. And then they both kind of need to be on the pay-per-view, so let's just do this. It feels inessential on that basis. And again, you get that almost insulting episodic TV thing of... Jesus Christ. <laughs> if Kanosuke Takeshita has got Matt Seidel's number and Matt Seidel teamed with the Blackpool Combat Club <laughs> in Arena Mexico, that means that Kanosuke Takeshita could have John Moxley's number on Sunday. Oh, my God. 
Jesus, he's going to win. I never thought about that. <laughs> he's going to win. So there's a lot of reasons why I was like, meh, I'll take the match as it comes and it'll probably be great. Oh, the, this put, the, the squash itself was really good. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm glad he didn't take 10, 15 minutes. I mean, I would have taken it for this yes. pairing, but that's yes. purely my, my side, side I'll bias, yeah, yeah, bias yeah. my side I'll bias, right? This German suplex, the yank into the German suplex. I am barely being hyperbolic when I say Kanosuke Takeshita is such a powerful god of a pro wrestler with just an unreal amount of strength. Matt Seidel basically looked like Yoshihiko. <laughs> you know the DDT doll? Yes. He's like, bang, come here, German suplex. Like, all right, that's you dead. <laughs> like, Takeshita's too awesome. You can yeah. book him in the most basic, predictable, borderline insulting bits of I've missed North American him, yeah. TV storytelling. It's like, I, I'm in love with you, Kanosuke. You are unbelievable. Yesterday, this card looked too busy, looked too full. I think this was the template for the perfect dynamite in the monthly pay-per-view era because every match was an angle more than it was a match. When I think about it, mm. maybe maybe with the exception of the open, but then not really. It was two angles, the second angle <laughs> instead of the match. Like, this included, this may be the best example. Maybe Swerve, Nick Wayne was a better example. But yeah, every match was an angle more than it was a match and more power to them because that's the way this needs to go. There's Dynamite needs to be more this so that it distinguishes itself from the pay-per-views. There have been better Dynamites in terms of this would get a four or this would get a four yeah. or a quarter and this would too. And with you, you can't do this every week. Obviously, this is a go-home show. Mm -hmm. But this is, I vastly prefer this type of Dynamite to these glorified pay-per-views you've, yeah. you've got enough pay-per-views you can't do the glorified pay-per-views anymore so you well point out uh the young bucks are backstage handing out more flies about darby allen and then they realize uh swerve sat in their their seats so such a funny reveal yeah. what is it what up turds what up turds <laughs> <laughs> he's got the the plaster on because he's bloodied up from uh last week and uh they're like hey here you go, world champions. Make sure you keep keeping an eye for this guy. And he just takes it and spits his gum into it. I think it was crumples it all up. And he's like, yeah, hey, bunch of losers. Uh, hit my bloody music. I'm out. And uh, I haven't seen him either. And just heads off. And they, they, they don't really know. So they're just ranting at people because he's made them look like bell ends quite rightly. I like this. Yeah, I really liked it. Could you, and I'll tell you how to do your job, kind of have, go through the whole thing leading up to the post-match angle because I want to cover it all at once, if Including that's okay. the, the, all the post-match as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, it was Swerve Strickland versus uh, Nick Wayne. Um, and uh, Nick Wayne's just got the most punchable face. <laughs> he's great at this role. Uh, he's doing the whole cat and mouse thing early and you're like, just hits him, Swerve. <laughs> he eventually catches him, sends him into the barricade, takes his belt off and whips him. And I'm like the crowd, I'm like, do it more, Swerve. This is great. <laughs> deserves this um Strickland just dominates obviously um but Wayne manages to come back after he sends uh, Swerve headfirst into the turnbuckle um Strickland goes to the floor eats a PK from the apron Wayne tries a moonsault but gets caught uh, but he counters into a spinning DDT on the floor to take us to break um when we come back Swerve manages to hit a swerve stomp off the apron back inside uh Wayne says go on give us your best shot um Strickland tries, but uh, a top what rope swerve stomp, it, st swerve stomp even is dodged by it's a Nick. Swerve stomp. <laughs> uh, I thought he said swerve stonk. Like, that's happened like John Cena team with Trish Stratus. <laughs> so uh, he hits um, a rolling code red for two. Goes to the uh, house call, does Nick Wayne. So I'll allow that spot from collision on that basis because they call back to they did it. So fair enough. Uh, <laughs> We're not just wasting our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it gets countered, uh, power bomb into a power slam by Swerve, and then he just takes his head off with the house call. One, two, three. Uh, post match, here comes. Should we do all this year as well? And then yep, here. and the car. Uh, post, please, please. Post match, here comes uh, Christian Cage, Kill Switch, and Nick Wayne's mom, who I should say has got to go win uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um Christian and Mama Wayne check on Nick, um, Kill Switch attacks. Uh, Swerve, but Swerve manages to crotch, kill Switch, um, and then suddenly Christian Cage is alone with Swerve, and he's begging off all of a sudden. Now it's one on one. Chases him, uh, <laughs> doing hitting a house call on the way, to, which I really liked. On the way to to tr catch up with uh, was that on Kill Switch? On Kill Switch, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Cage does the thing he's done before. He runs all the way. You follow him. He goes through the out of the arena. 
get out of there, you steal someone's car, drive, and you think, oh, he's going to get away again. Uh, but just as he's driving off, another car blocks him in. Who is it? It's Prince Nana, who's sipping a coffee. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I love this. Swerve obviously catches up to him, grabs Christian, pulls him out of the car, beats him up. Cage inexplicably thinks, how can I get away from Swerve? I'll just climb on the car's roof. <laughs> Swerve obviously gets him there, DDTs him on the roof, and it looks like he's going to hit him with a concerto on the bonnet of the car, basically, uh, before Cage manages to, to leg it. Great segment, this. this was, Finally getting some payback. This was absolutely sensational, and I would describe it from beginning to end, from the first time you see... It's not that good. Oh. The first time you see Swerve Strickland to the last time you see Christian Cage scarpering away, nothing short of a baby face to a force. Yes. That immeasurably heightened my love of the Swerve Strickland character. And I would even compare it like lofty heights of John Moxley 2020. Dare I say it, Steve Austin 1998. Oh my God. Like he's funny. What up, turds? <laughs> he's just cool. He's always been cool. He'll never not be cool. He comes to the ring. Yes, he's vulnerable to the odd Nick Wayne counter, but he quite handily kicks his ass. It wasn't 50-50. Was it, it wasn't 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. He carries himself as someone who just quite enjoyed it. Maybe a little bit too much, susceptible, vulnerable to the odd counter. But then he doesn't ask kicking, but in a uniquely Swerve Strickland way. Like, he links his offense brilliantly. Like, it was an apron spot that I felt something for. We've been talking as well about the Swerve Osprey less than ideal contrasts. That suplex onto the apron, one million times better than one of my least favorite moves in wrestling, and that is the Oz Cutter on the apron. Every time I see Will Ospreay do that, I just think it must suck for you to take. Mm. It's stupid, and he needs to retire it. Um, so he kind of handily kicks Nick Wayne's ass, and it's just quite thrilling because it's the demeanor, it's the way he does like uh, an ass kicking, but does it in his spectacular own way, and then you get that all-important... Uh, and this is why they do the heat angles. And maybe I need to judge the cycle of television by the go-home shows. I think they did it one too often, actually. Mm, that's fair. And you think, uh, here we go again. It is the go-home show. So you need to raise the belt. And Oh, God, is Christian Cage going to win? <laughs> if that no, happens on Sunday. <laughs> they change the question. You think, I just want to see him kick his ass then. Yes. I want to see him kick his ass in this predictable filler defense. So what happens is they fail to beat him down. Swift Strickland, obviously, as you mentioned, gets uh, the better of kill switch, and then Christian Cage starts to run away, and then you get this Moxley 2022-esque performance from Swerve combined with next-level AEW detail. I was in genuine, this is my AEW Nirvana watching all this play out, in another great babyface moment from Swerve Strickland. That almost no-look um, last call to kill shot was very much that... Have you seen For a Few Dollars More? No. Or like, a Western. Yes. When you, get, when you get the gunslinger, who's just so casually great at killing people, that he'll just wait for them to go on the horse. No, get the gun. Bang. Mm. Just a casually incredible ass kicker. Got that energy from Swerve when he just... No luck, bang, I've got bigger fish to fry than a big dinosaur, right? <laughs> Goes up the ramp, and then you are reminded that, oh, Christian Cage did this to get away from Copeland, right? Once upon a time. Swerve, it's a few leaps of logic, but I'm happy to jump. It's like, what if he runs away? Well, Nana, he's done this against Copeland. We'll get him, Nana. You make your triumphant comeback. I fist pumped in my yeah. living room when I saw the Nana reveal. I thought it was absolutely like tremendous bit of detail continuity and then you get that oh go on bash his brains in <laughs> he deserves it and then he runs away it's like oh i'll i'll want to watch that on sunday now yes exactly a five-star angle for me i thought this was unbelievable yeah like n nothing to add for how much i loved it and but the but the feeling of watching the right angle on the right night Reminding you for the swerves. right guy. Reminding you that he's the right guy. Yes. Yeah. Like all of that. That that's such a nice feeling, and it does stick with you. And it is one of those things you remember. And after weeks of it sort of being the opposite, not only is he getting his arse handed to him, but you kind of he's forgettable as well. So you're starting to doubt if he's the guy that should be in the position for this to counter all of that on this night in particular was 
was just nice. Like it reminded you of what it, this all kind of should be for Swerve. So it was brilliant. Like that, I'll remember that visual of the sky in the background after Christian's rolled away and it was like, there's a top baby. I'm looking up at the top baby face and it felt great. Mm-hmm. Christian Cage, again, plays his role to utter perfection, yeah. but it's it's one of those things where it's not even a take. It's not an insight anymore. It's just a fact. But you should, it bears repeating. You don't want to lose sight of how yeah, awesome he is. And arguably, you're right. Yeah, you're not paying for the pay-per-view on Sunday to see, oh, can, can Swerve still be world champion off the back of this? So you just want to see him kick his kick ass. Kick his ass, it's yeah. A way, it's a great way of reframing that predictable first title defense that has to happen by definition of the reign. Got a great bit of booking, by the way, but I'll save that for the double or nothing preview. Okay. Just, because I won't be on that. From an optics point of view, I'm starting to think this is just how it on last. I'm not saying it can follow Anarchy in the arena because on the strength of this closing angle, I don't think it can. Optics are worth something, and I think there's a good chance Swerve doesn't headline Forbidden Door. Mm. Or a chance he doesn't. It's that kind of card. It's worse. It's much worse. Well, because they can't follow it. Yeah, if, it, if, if it's got that, it's a long card. Anarchy yeah. in the Arena's going to be, it's Darby Allen in that match. I know. <laughs> you cannot do it. It's, Christ, it's Christian's wrestling and Swerve's overness. But then we've had this with AW in the past, with similar quality wrestlers. I've been funny. Kenny Omega and Christian Cage couldn't really That's follow it. what happened at All Out. Yeah. Mm. And that was bigger because it was the punk thing, but there was a big cage match. Well, follow yeah. it. First, uh, that, that rampage punk, punk match. Hangman, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Same thing. Bye. Uh, well, from Christine Cage to Adam Copeland now, uh, because it's Malachi Black versus Kyle O'Reilly, and Adam Copeland's wedding ring was uh, as part of uh, Malachi Black's mask as part of his entrance. Uh, obviously, both men have got uh, kickboxing backgrounds, as commentary put over, so they, they go back and forth with kicks early on. Uh, O'Reilly drops Black first with a knee strike, uh, but then Black comes back, uh, counters a kick, and hits a uh, pump knee to send O'Reilly to the outside and take us to break. When we come back, uh, O'Reilly's fighting up. He knees his way out of a suplex. He slams Black uh, Black down. A crowd are behind him. Snap German suplex, a stomp, a rolling elbow gets two. Uh, but all of a sudden, Black fires back. He hits a brain buster for a great two count. They both get to their feet. They're doing dueling high kicks. Uh, Black fakes a uh, uh, pump kick, I think it was. O'Reilly goes for it. And uh, Black hits the end, his, uh, his uh, spin kick to the uh, to the head to finish it. One, two, three. Um, Malachi Black celebrates, and then all of a sudden, the lights flicker, they change, they go red. It's hell. It's <laughs> meant to convey hell. And the lights come back to normal lights. Um, and Malachi Black's looking around when all of a sudden, blood pours from the ceiling to coat Malachi Black. Poor it fires. <laughs> yeah. like, Reminds me of it hurt. You know when uh, Seth Rollins just gets out of the way of that lowering cage spike? If that hit him square on the head, he's concussed and he's out of the match. Like, why couldn't they invest as much energy and resource into getting this right as they did the exploding barbed wire death match? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This was like the best version of the worst crap you'll ever see in your life, this. <laughs> just coated him in it as well. Uh, and uh, Adam Copeland appears on the screen. He's got a suit jacket on. He's walking down some steps, steps and he says, uh, Malachi, be careful what you wish for. I'll see you soon. And then he laughs maniacally, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier. It looked <laughs> like a forbidden door had been entered in the 2022 Judgment Day. Yeah. Walk through it. That, that Absolutely he's ridiculous. Worn it. He's definitely wanted it. Yes, I know. Big chair. It definitely. was definitely giving Judgment Day. My God. Mark Twain once said that golf was a uh, a good walk ruined. Mm-hmm. I think you get a play games during a walk. That's much better, Mark. But anyway... <laughs> you play crazy golf, Mark. Supernat- <laughs> supernatural bollocks is a good wrestling match ruined. My goodness. Yeah. The contrast between this match and the post-match was just dreadful, wild, stunning, because I, it, it lacked that scorching heat. But my God, like, this is the sort of match that just reminds you to maintain your perspective and be grateful that AEW exists because you... Uh, You'd never see it. For better or worse, different tastes, etc. You'd never see this on WWE TV. Why not? This is awesome. It's just so creative, so distinct, so absolutely anti-in-house style of anywhere, pretty much. Um, they've got unique attributes. They share them, and they had this built this great pseudo-kickboxing match yes, around exactly. it. Like some of the strikes looked incredibly vicious, but again, how the evasions and the ducks and like the the, the what they call knee checks, leg checks or whatever, yeah, yeah. just to try and put over. If I get hit here, I'm in serious trouble. And then the stiffness only enhanced 
that story that they were telling. I loved as well like how quick the submission transitions were in the counters because they conveyed the idea brilliantly that if you make a, a nanosecond of a strategic error, like you will like get ended right now. It had that end any time energy mm. that so many endless back and forth wrestling matches on TV do these days because the strikes had been built as such threats throughout. It didn't have that very obvious we're going to the finish or we're going to the bit before the finish. It just didn't have that rhythm. Mm. It didn't have that incredibly tedious, boring, overexposed rhythm. I had so much time for this match. I thought it was really well done and I'm glad it ended at 10 minutes. Mm. Me too. And the irony is that Malachi Black is the character and the wrestler who has contributes to the creative, has this obsession with mind games and mind games and mind games. And they're always pathetic, right? Invariably. This is the angle stuff. Is there a better literal mind game than him feigning to do the kick? Kyle O'Reilly drops his guard and then gets kicked in the face. That's the mind games you should be playing. That is the exact point I wanted to make. Yeah. It was the exact thought I had. What an awesome finish because he's... A mind game within the context of a wrestling match. Yeah, I said the exact him a same better thing. wrestler. Yeah, and it's just like, God damn it, man! Get it? Like, please get it. This, I, I promise, I'm not stepping on your dick with this. When you said about there that you wouldn't get this in WWE, you got it in NXT. They did this in about 2018, I think it was. Nobody was watching. It was Triple H's super intense full sale NXT, and people getting. Was it on the TV? Yeah, yeah, I would have people skipped get, it. Bit <laughs> sick of it. Like, but it was a, you could tell that they were enjoying, oh, we like this stuff. We'll have a mini sort of kickboxing thing. All right, okay. I apologize to No, it wasn't as good as this. wasn't as good as this. It wasn't like, as distinct. No, no, no. It wasn't. Like, I would have known. I would have known. Full fans didn't. <laughs> what was great about this, you, I was thinking about your take on the AJ Styles, uh, Cody Rhodes match, which I loved, by the way. But the fact where you say, like, sometimes the fans were just into the spectacle of it rather than into the match. Yeah. The fans would go super quiet, but God, they were into it because when they were instructed by the wrestlers to come up for a particular, like, Kickboxing moment, they did. Mm -hmm. Like, watch this match back. They're popping for all the moments where it's like, oh, he's loaded him in. Or oh, he's set a trap and he's fallen into that trap. Yeah. Or like, oh, I didn't think he'd strike him from there. There was lo like, there was loads of pops that reflected that reaction because you, I was doing this to Lenny since, hmm. like, I, this isn't my chosen style of pro wrestling, but I was drawn in by it yeah. because I knew I was watching two practitioners. I knew from the first second I was watching two people that were- the Credibility. Know, yeah, they were going to test each other with it. And all the more frustrating- why does he insist on being a goth magician? Pick a lane, mate. Like, the under the dead man, right, when he was throwing soup bones as the best pure striker, it was mostly when he was big evil or when he was like work rate era Undertaker. That was when he put aside the magic powers. It's like, I can kick ass just because I roll my eyes and turn the lights on. Like, just pick one yeah. lane. And Malachi Black's inability to do so was laid bare because they were right next to each other. Because you had the bloodbath immediately after it, like, yeah, this is the stuff you actually like. No, I actually enjoy the kickboxing. Which is it, mate? Just do one, one, one so much better. Yeah. <laughs> one so much better. Yes. Here, now it's time for my audio dissertation on the fake blood angle. So I'm sorry this could go for the rest of the podcast. In, in, the main event was really good. The main event was really good if, if we miss it. Right, okay. So let's just unpack this, okay. The red lights flicker, who's doing that? Maybe it's just wrestling. I'll let that one go. <laughs> okay. Then this blood falls all over Malachi Black, right? Now, I know, obviously, that this blood is fake. Okay. Is the insinuation that this is real blood or fake blood on the television program? Real. Right, okay. How did Adam Copeland procure this blood? As I understand it, and feel free to intervene, mm -hmm. there are three possible options about how Cope procured the blood. <laughs> Either he's killed a man, several of them. Just to watch him die and take his blood. Either he's literally killed. How else do you get that much blood? Two, he's killed some small animals, mm. a lot of small animals to procure the blood. Or, <laughs> or... Or he has robbed a blood bank, stay with me now, thus depriving people who are maybe in life-threatening situations who need a transfusion of the transfusion, and he's indirectly killed, okay? So those are the only three. Is there a fourth? There's a fourth. He's slowly built it up 
by taking out a pint of his own blood on a weekly basis for several weeks, if not months. That's another alternative. It's part of a bigger blood-based plan. Right, okay. I'll just have this in reserve. Yeah. That makes Don't. it even stupider because I've got another point to make. Okay, okay. sorry. If, no, 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 that's a viable option. There's only silly options when you are unpacking silly angles. <laughs> so for once, you're not being yourself. When yet. you are collecting a gallon of blood. When you're collecting <laughs> your own blood. Right, okay, stay with me while I'm doing this. Right, okay. So imagine you've gone to all of those lengths just to do this, okay? Right. That's if it's real blood. The other insinuation storyline is that the fake blood is indeed fake, and it was just just a mind game. <laughs> I've got you where I want you. <laughs> right, okay. Here's what happens next. Right. So you've got fake blood, and it's fake. Yeah. Obviously, Edge isn't... Adam Copeland isn't a killer of small animals. No. That's Shawn Michaels. <laughs> right. So instead, the blood is fake, and it's meant to be fake. It's just a mind game, right? Okay. <laughs> right. What, why has he done this? Right. One, because it's a mind game. Two, I want you to be horrified by the blood, right? All Malachi Black has to do is that which he would ordinarily do, you would hope, after competing in any wrestling match, and that's have a shower. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like, I was going to do that anyway, actually, <laughs> because I've been sweating and I smell a bit and no one likes to walk around when you've done loads of physical activity. Imagine doing loads of, imagine like playing football mm. five aside, right? And you wake up and you just go, right, time for work. It's like, oh no, you want to you be yeah, clean. Oh God, no. So he was going to have a shower anyway, right? You'd hope. So all this is a complete waste of time, right? It didn't even look like blood. There were bits in it. Yeah. It was jam, or sorry, jelly. <laughs> Right? <laughs> it was it, the old viscous acidic liquid bolognese, yeah. wasn't it? Right, yeah. okay. And here's the other thing, right? If the idea is right, okay. Take away the blood and the, you know, the need for the shower or the murders. It's just <laughs> a way, <laughs> it's just a way of reminding Malachi Black of who you're really dealing with. You don't even know who you summoned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't even know who you summoned. You've summoned Brood Edge, Right. Off, <laughs> right? It's the idea that uh, you, you've summoned Brood Edge now, and this is the symbol of Brood Edge, right? The Brood, right? How can you gaze upon the horror of me cosplaying as my old self, infamous only for a pretty cool entrance? We come out at night promo. Gaze upon the horror of me cosplaying as my old self that, in fact, was a terrible gimmick that prevented me from being over. And once I got rid of it and started being more my cocksure, bantery self, that's when I got over. Yeah. The brood were never over. It's the biggest fake narrative in pro wrestling history. And Malachi Black maybe did love them. And maybe he's scared of Brood Edge. This whole thing is f***ing <laughs> Counter offer. That's a great dissertation, by the way. Thank you. Brody King... Cannonballing Gangrel through a table on Sunday. Yeah, I think they're going to try. Yeah, Gangrel's fun. about. Yeah, Gangrel will be about. And it'll be Watch fun. Out. They Gangrel's own, about. Don't they own him a payday? Because they were going to use him for something, weren't they? And then was that when? No, that was WWE. No, WWE. They AEW actually did use him. The books. At what pay per view? And in what match? In what context? I thought it was on TV for the young. Well, they've used him twice. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, I remembered. Was it? I'm going to get the pay per view wrong. All Out 2020? Full gear. Full gear 2020 in the 50-hour-long Hardy compound match between Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. Yes. It's a few that never ended. There was literally one good bit in there, and I'm going to put my hands up and put Matt Hardy over. He is there in the compound. It's in his rural house in wherever, Carolinas or whatever, and he punches Sammy Guevara, who slips in the dirt, and when the memes were popping off, yes. Matt Hardy goes, the competition is in the mud. Yeah. You love to see it. That was actually really good. Nice, isn't it? He used to have his finger on the pulse, Matt Hardy, didn't he? Yeah. That's kind of how we got away with it for so long. Yeah. yeah, it was bad. I can't, I can't compete with that, but it was sure sucked ass. Like, it, again, like, the one thing I wanted to add to that about arranging for the blood, like, the admin. I always think the admin. Like, if you've not gone <laughs> yeah, who put it up there? That's <laughs> it. Like, wait, did he have subcontracted riggers or was it magic? Like it's it's one of it's, 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 yeah. it's one of the other subcontracted riggers or magic. magic. It is one of all the EVPs have decided that I'm really pissed Tony got off when we mess up one of his rings. It was cleaned up within minutes. Yeah. When and he's a billionaire. Yeah. And they like Christian they like Christian Cage and a lot of heels, so 
Yeah, they don't like Copeland. If anything, they're siding with Christian Cage because they gave him the shot above Jack Perry. I promise I really had a good time with the rest of the show, mostly. <laughs> yeah. it's, we always take the piss out of this when they don't really... They don't, it's not so much they don't abide by their own rules. They've set they just have no rules, and that's how you get this lawless nonsense. We always pick on the NXT deadline match where, was it Alba Fire taps the referee's leg, and then he dribbles Black Goo, and it's like, hmm. that power is more significant than you need to win with a roll-up here. You've got yeah. something like that. Broken the material laws of the world. <laughs> yes. Use that. Use that rather than a roll-up, I reckon. Like, again, if Edge hasn't subcontracted out riggers, he's got equal magic to Malachi Black, because Malachi, oh no, this blood's all over me. Luckily, my body can summon Black Mist and Goo that I use on a really regular basis. I'm not remotely rattled by this, Edge. What else you got? I like, <laughs> need a shower anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> if anything. What? Huh? Right, moving on. <laughs> Taz as well, like, miserable bastard chill. Oh, yeah, got, got it all over me. Well, so what's <laughs> it hurt? Does it burn? Does it stain? He can't get a shower. So he's raging. As opposed to Malachi Black, who is in the perfect place. to like, I'm like... It's cool. I think I've got some stuff on me. It's like the blood of my fellow man is all over me. Like, you know what I mean? It's just that some <laughs> shit all over I saw the tweet of somebody doing the side-by-side -side with <laughs> Kevin spilling the bolognese in the office. <laughs> uh, it, it was jam on it, though. <laughs> Preserve. Looks like preserve. <laughs> Six <laughs> gallons of preserve, Excalibur. X. Uh, absolute, oh, God. Move on. Video package for Anarchy in the Arena. Uh, Brian Danielson uh, say, saying he's going to fight for AW because he loves this place. And they also show the footage of the Righteous and Lance Arch taking out FTR, who Danielson clarifies is not going to be a dynamite. Uh, if the Elite want to take their shot, they better not miss because they won't like the consequences. I looked on with a keen interest about Cesaro not really being into all this. I like this. Um, we've been trying to manifest on the collision preview and that, uh, the end of the BCC. What yeah, if? That's, uh, that's what that's if? A, <laughs> what if John Moxley can be a baby face again? And Brian around, Danielson can be a baby face again. We're laying it on pretty thick in the main event that like he's got nobody. Does he now? Yeah. Just yeah. Cla uh, Claudio has been saying, like, you lost, you nearly ended your career in the yeah. first one. I, I don't want any part of this. Good that. And he just walked out when Daniels yeah. tried to do a pro. He's like, oh, guess I'm done. Guess my night's finished. <laughs> See you later, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we came to Sid. Sorry, I'm going to check my, uh, my notes here. The one women's match on the cards. Uh, it was. Toneless, timey storm. Yes. Uh, and Mariah May versus Soraya and Harley Cameron. Um, Storm's still wearing the flag that she stole from Serena Deeb for her strip tease on collision. Um, early on, you've got a shotgun dropkick from Mariah May uh, and a spinning side slam, but Soraya comes in and wants to face Tony Storm. Former outcast, go at it, of course. Um, Storm hits a Thez press, but uh, tags May. And body slams are onto Soraya. May tries to do the same thing, but can't do it. So Storm's trying to do it again. Um, Soraya fakes an injury, though. And that allows Cameron to come in. Do you buy that? What, the faked injury? No. I did a bit. I'm sorry. Did you? Yeah. I like Soraya it's, in this, yeah. by the way. I, I thought Soraya was match, good, yeah. But I'd, I'd know. It was just that immediate clutch. Yeah. Like, come here. But I think something's broken. I bought it personally. That allows Cameron to get a cheap shot in on May and takes her takes us to commercial with her isolated. But Storm gets a hot tag when we come back, hits Cameron with a headbutt and a drop toe hold on Soraya onto her partner in the corner. Um, they want dueling suplexes, but uh, Cameron and Soraya hit simultaneous sunset bombs for two. Um, they take too long to follow up, though, and that allows Storm and May to block boots, uh, put them down, lay a smooch on Cameron and Soraya. May hits Mayday, Storm hits Storm Zero on Soraya and Cameron and gets the one, two, three. Post match, Storm's going to do another strip tease. Um, that Serena Deeb appears, takes out Luther with a chair. May gets sent outside uh, and. We can really see who the heel is now because Deep hits Storm with the shoe, puts a chair on her, half crab. She's tapping, she's screaming. Refs have to come in and tell her to let it go, and she leaves, retaining her flag. Yeah, bad and good here. The idea of, like, Tony Storm, who's got a heel manager who interferes on her behalf, and then this heel underling who cheats on her behalf, and the three... Heels kind of are getting sneak attacked by the new heel because she's less popular because she's not as entertaining a TV character. This post match angle just underscored how broken this dynamic yes. is, and it can be better if you just have a proper line, in my opinion. Um, so that was that. I get like worried that 
The baby faces, the situational baby faces in this match can do a non-consensual kiss spot. And yes, I understand it was consented to by Soraya and Holly Cameron. A worked non-consensual yes, kissing yeah, spot. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's so ugly. And I hate how it's like a baby face move. And I hate how it gets a pop. And I hate how nobody else points out that there are probably people watching who just don't want to be reminded of mm, things like that. Yeah. I just really hate it. I really, really hate it. Um, this match was as simple as it gets. You get the baby faces, get the shine. You get the heels getting the heat by being nefarious in this case. Soraya doing an injury angle. And, you know, it helps on a meta level, I guess, that she's had injury problems in the past and there are health issues that prevent her from wrestling all the time and what have you. Um, so I bought that. And then the baby faces, despite not even being that in sync doing the double teams, are such a popular act that when they get the comeback, the fans come up for it. Just solid, well done. I don't think it's a blow away great match, but I'm broadly into all of the characters. And, oh, my God, my head is going to turn square next. Yeah. Like, meal deal with the just cheese sandwich, a burger without relish. I f- <laughs> love this. Like, again, it was actually really well done, though, I think. Another match. Basics elevated. Yeah, much as an angle as anything else. Uh, I'm just a Harley Cameron guy. Seen her sing live, seen her wrestle three times on television. I think she's great. Like, she bumped her absolute arse off in this match. Um, she's game. She really is. Like, she feels credible. Mm. And from what we know, I'm like, again, I've said this like three weeks in a row now, not a prodigy. But you really we'll see her in two months, by the way. You, <laughs> you do have that's to take and that's these, the issue. You have to take these single page cage match wrestlers level of experience into account when judging it because the, the game's gone. People get on television and like you just don't know what you're gonna get half mm-hmm. the time and that creates all sorts of problems and it kills careers, as we've seen more than once. Especially in women's wrestling where they've got enough like mountains to climb before they're even like in level pegging with the men. She's had, this has been a great, <laughs> this Serena Deep Tony Son Fuad has been great for Harley Cameron. Yes. Like, honestly, yes. that's, that's maximizing your minutes in its purest form, right? So she's been great throughout this whole thing. I am, I'm a bit higher, I think, than Sige on the post-match because this was on the nose, but it worked very hard to address the problems of the past several weeks. There was nothing of, like, while she was beating down Tony Storm and Tony Storm was screaming and while she had the shoe out and she was, like, sort of, Glaring at the hard camera, the, the commentators were saying, "Yes, and if you recall, Serena Deeb survived a lot of near-death experiences." Last yeah. was like, <laughs> "She's the baddie, yeah. she's the goodie." Sorry, guys. Like, we know where the fans are going to go Sunday, so we'll lean into that. Yeah. So again, in terms of go-home stuff, in terms of addressing some of the problems with this, we have at long last arrived at all the things we need to to just let them have this great match that mm. they're clearly going to have as well. So, a lot of like little wins for me. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, before we move on, we have to get to the name of the game. We, we have, have to. to. The name of the game. We, have we to get absolutely to the, uh, must. The aim of the game. Zeke. The aim of the game is to identify to the hour, minute, and second the first time you hear the first note for the first entrance theme for the first woman to um, appear for the only women's match on Dynamite. And it tends to fall in the same range, and it tends to happen in a pretty suspicious time. And we've cottoned onto it. Mm. We are on their goddamn case. What has happened is that. This AEW women's division doesn't really feel like a passion project. It feels like, but he wokes will kick off if we don't put the birds on. That's exactly how it feels <laughs> from my perspective. And hey, maybe it isn't AEW's necessarily. If you look at Ring of Honor, there's a very much a difference there. Maybe it's standards and practices <laughs> who, you know, feel like, I know the bloody wokes will kick off if we don't put the broads on. And that, it just feels <laughs> obligatory. And if we can nail it, this pattern, and, you know, they'll change it around, but it's coming back. If we can just nail it to the hour, minute, and second. We will italicize, underscore, and put in bold this thought process, but blah, 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 a mouthful, oh, as yeah. always. So we jingleize how we perceive either Warner's or AEW's thought process here, and that jingle is, don't worry, guys. When the women come out to play, the main event ain't too far away. <coughs> and that's the aim of the game. The name of the game, as I uh, scribbled down literally 90 seconds before recording is... Because he's been writing ups and downs. Available <coughs> right now, whatculture.com forward slash WWE. Indeed is. <coughs> when I'm with you, Tony, I go out my head. Just one women's match. <laughs> just one women's match. We get eight minutes and that's just tough because Tony Khan just can't get enough of men's wrestling. <laughs> Good. Um... Thank Not you. as good as yesterday, but it was all right. It's just, it's dangerous. He's been through the Turner suits. The Turner suits. Potential. If you look at Honor Club, yeah, and mm-hmm. the Ring of Honor and the way he does it there, 
Ask questions. Well, potentially the last ever ladies' night, of course, this. Yeah. This we'll is. talk about more of this on the Dynamite preview next week, but we were saying maybe when Mercedes is wrestling regularly. It was big in the contract talk that she refused to be part of the one segment. She would have the segment as well as one style of it. Indeed. The whole deal. Indeed. It Wasn't it um, Fightful Select who came through with that? I think so. I believe so. Probably safer just to say yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, probably yeah. was that. Shout out, as always, to the... Uh, <laughs> Jericho's not giving that one to Dave, is he? <laughs> Panda Blair, at Adam Blair, at Adam Wilton, four on X, and Jose Palomares, at the Ho 11 on X. The guys who always take care of the... Um, Data. Thank you. Um, Sige, what was our guesses in D7? I never know, man. I never know. Uh, Michael Hamflet, one hour, ten minutes, and twenty oh. seconds. Michael Sidgwick, one minute, 25, one, minute. one hour, 25 minutes and knee seconds. And how, how did that song go that went with it? Because I loved it. I can't remember. Just one women's match. Na, 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 na. One, two, five. <laughs> that was it. Wait a minute, I can do it again. Wait there. <laughs> that was just a practice. There, we, there, we, there, we, there, we, there. Shh. Just one women's match. You can book two if you try. Just one women's match. I was minutes. One, two, five. five. Indeed. Right. Um, Adam Wilborn, I don't know you from Adam. One hour, 27 minutes and 18 seconds. This is why he's saying, oh, there's probably going to be two next week and end the game here. Because you're someone out front. It's going to be like the fantasy football. You're going to have to buy yourself another trophy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Six correct guesses for the year, so I'll probably just call it at that point. Yeah, last one wins, Fenton. <laughs> Four for Hamlet. Get it done before the Euros, before the election, tidy it all up. Oh, honestly. Yeah, I don't think there's any catching me now. So, uh, six <laughs> correct guesses from the year for me. Four for Hamlet, one for Sige. Uh, thank you to, to Adam Blair, who's in... Hang on one second. Where is he now? We watched Dynamite in his, uh, in his hotel suite. The hotel bar. Hotel Tor- bar. In Toronto, of all places cool, now. Man. Who? What? I don't know in Toronto. Oh, God, he's great. He's in life. Montreal. Honestly, really. I'm jealous of his life. Yeah, mm. it's a cool ass life. One hour, 36 minutes, and 43 seconds. Very yeah. much when the it's women come out to play. The main event ain't too far away at all, actually. It's actually right now. Mm. 36, man. It's like, that's a sat and I'm main event, isn't it? Yeah. 136. <laughs> Yeah, the moment I saw the little graphics in the corner, I saw Danielson sign up, I was like, yeah, that 110 for Hamlet's looking pretty uh, pretty much of a long shot right uh-huh. now. Yeah, when you go for the, when you go watch it on fight as well, go pause, how long is this overrun yet again? Oh, six minutes. Ah, and then it kept going. I was like, oh, I'm fine. Wilborn's got it in the bag. <laughs> uh, before that, we had the Bang Bang Gang saying, uh, you have to beat the guns on collision to get the title shot. Mm. Are they booking it now? I thought the Young Bucks were booking it. Actually, I thought Tony Khan was booking it. And then in the lineup, they like flashed the graphic up. So like, we think the guns suck. We got the match. <laughs> 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 yes. I think Excalibur said, uh, probably, or maybe. <laughs> so well, don't make the graphic. Give them a chance. Are we good? Yeah. Because <laughs> I guess. Uh, main event time. That was class, though, because the double North the music played. It's like the power's back. Every time you... Sing it, I think the bargain on theme for some reason. Who's done it in the arena? There's a big like, kick up at the end of the day. It's ruined. <laughs> um, so, as a birthday present to Brian Daniels, and he got to fight a giant basically in the main event. Satnam Singh, his first singles match on AWTV. I was trying to remember, is it nose to nipple, you always used to say? Yeah, with Ray and Great Carly. Yeah. It's like like nose to cack this. <laughs> yeah, he was huge compared to him. Uh, bell rings. Oh, and I should mention, Jeff Jarrett comes out as part of the entrance. You must have been relieved. Thank God. Mm. I got my beat down at the end as you well. You got a guitar stuff as well. Like, right? Oh, God. There's a good, good I get guitar, guitar stuff. stuff. That was when good Brian stuff. was on the guitar, I was like, now you're a wrestler, mate. Happy <laughs> now you finally... No. Happy birthday, piss off. <laughs> he finally <laughs> agrees with you that Danielson is one of the greatest of all time. There, there he did an ankle lock on a bear once, remember that? Yeah. Was he, who's he trying to... Was he, when he was courting... Free Bella Bree, or I someone. Was, yeah. He's like, oh, look at me. I'm tough. I could do an ankle lock on a bear. Well, it, tweet out teasers. This week I take on Barry the Bear. What's going on, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sex. Right, I get it. Full sex. <laughs> um, so Danielson fires off kicks at the bell, but eats a huge big boot and a big chop. Uh, delayed vertical suplex from Satnam. 
Danielson goes to the outside, gets sent into the steps. Uh, Sanjay Dutt tried to clean the announce table and the whole thing f***ing collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> I rewound that. I was like, what's going on there? That was to your prop point earlier about the <laughs> edges of contracted blood riggers. Like, that table's solid as a rock normally. Yeah, like, I know. Punk went through it and that, but normally that's going nowhere. Like, you've, you've gone too far the other way, lads. <laughs> he, like, knocked a drink off anyway. Well, that's, that's the whole structural integrity. Of all gone. the commentators all night, been like, don't breathe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't breathe, don't breathe. One spe- uh, maybe the, the um, blood weakened it. The wave of blood that hit it. That would have been so funny if the blood collapsed it. <laughs> oh, Taz, Taz's drink goes everywhere. So, oh, oh, shut up, man. <laughs> anyway, Danielson fires back. Uh, multiple running knees off the apron, sends Singh into the barricade. Tries for a char- charging knee, but gets caught and choke slammed on the apron. That, that was, was a really fun. good bit of improv. You see Jarrett in the background, by the way. Um, he had a chair because he's... Uh, old school knows how to do these things. I can work matches that haven't been laid out beat for beat. He got a chair, propped it up. It was like, go on. He wanted Satnam to do the choke slam through the chair, but I think they decided to improvise the spot on the apron yeah. instead. Yeah, it was fine. Um, Jarrett and Danielson would make magic together. They would, wouldn't they? They would, certainly would. They would just say, right, here's the basic outline. 12 minutes. Okay, let's go. It, it cannot go wrong. It cannot go wrong, eh? No. Still got still time. Yep. Um, Singh rips off the top turnbuckle, wants to slam Danielson into it. Uh, the ref puts a stop to all that, though. Um, and with the ref busying himself with the, the turnbuckle, Danielson hits a low blow and a Busaiku knee. Can I, oh, sorry, I need to talk about turnbuckles very, I, very I quickly. I saw you tweet this morning. I figured was there three right. matches where they did turnbuckle stuff? So There was at least two. Nick Wayne sent Swerve into it. In the opener. The opener. Oh, God, yeah. And the main event. I tweeted, do you know that gag where sorry, Millhouse funny. becomes... Um, radioactive man sidekick, Jimmy yeah. Jellicas, when Homer's like, oh, I've always wanted to be a teamster. <laughs> <laughs> that is the road agents yeah. not talking to each other and not doing their jobs. Sloppy shot, You cannot be doing that. The two, I'd like, I thought about the two of them and I, oh, well, like, fair enough. There's more squashes than anything with Nick Wayne and I forgot about the other one. Yeah. Poor. Poor piss, poor. I mean, I'm sure they did have a sign this week saying, absolutely nobody go near the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, where are we up to now then? Um, Danielson kicks. Oh yeah, uh, Danielson hits a low blow on a Psycho knee. Tries another, but runs into uh, the cl- the clutches of Satnam Singh. The chop is unreal. Mm. Yes, he kicks his way out, and then the overhead chop from from Satnam was awesome. Goes for another suplex, but uh, Danielson just is like, oh, bloody hell, this is high up. I'm on his shoulders. Uh, and anvil elbows, label lock. Uh, he's gonna tap, but before he can do that, Jarrett and Lethal. Jump in, DQ, um, and commentary reminders. Look, the intention never was to win. It was to, to weaken Danielson. So Jarrett comes in with a guitar shot, but Danielson ducks and hits a series of knees on Jarrett and Lethal. Um, Danielson gets the guitar. Sanjay Dutt's going to get twatted with it, but he ducks and Satnam's thing so just punches through it. Oh, my, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Class. That was came. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, so good. <laughs> It looked like an exploding guitar. They always do, man. <laughs> Just a real punch. Of... <laughs> Jesus. It's one of the best things that's happened to wrestling. <laughs> the day that man swung that guitar for the first time. Honky's ones were real. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you see this like tiny thud in the honky. Oh, you killed the guy. Cool. Like, just make out a balsa wood. Put some salt in it. It's <laughs> cheaper and safer and yeah. it looks better and sounds better. You can break hundreds. You'll never draw a dime, but like, who gives a f***? <laughs> um, so they all beat down... Danielson, numbers game catches up to him. Uh, young Bucks make their entrance. Fancy of bollocks. Um, they walk down. They've got an, uh, an envelope of cash for Sanjay Dutt, who's just buzzing for this. Uh, and Dutt and the gang leave, and the Bucks take over, putting the boots to Danielson. They want an EVP trigger, but Danielson moves, and they collide knees. So Danielson can now fight back. The coin drop happens. Oh, God, here comes Kazucha Okada before that can even happen. Jack Perry jumps in from behind. Okada comes down and hits the Rainmaker. Uh, they're dragging Danielson up the ramp, up the stage. Uh, Okada does his big yeah, reveal of a table that they've got there. Um, they're going to uh, hoy him through it, and then on the big screen... We see a car pulling up to the arena. Who hops out but Darby Allen? Who's driving the car? Tony Khan, who fist bumps Darby, and they say he's lifted the ban on Darby Allen from the arena. Uh, and <laughs> we all think, I think it's fair to say, okay, that's fair enough. Darby Allen's back, and Darby Allen can fling himself yeah. like a bullet around, as you often say. 
but there's the Young Bucks and Jack Perry and Kazuchika Okada. And no Dan- FTR as well. No FTR, and Danielson is beaten down. He's just had a match as well. The giant. How do you um, how do you even the odds? A f***ing flamethrower. Yeah! Oh, I was like, yes! Come to- Go! I loved it, but it was even better, right, for me. Flame th- oh, my God, it's a flamethrower. Because at first, like, I thought it was like a, like a paintball gun or some sort of, like... Yeah, because you could see it outside. He was yeah. carrying it when he jumps out of the you car. You know what I'm glad he is, where they were firing them with tennis balls. I was like, well, that's going to really hurt when he gets them. But, like, that's that's weird. Yeah, yeah. He's, but he's brought, like, a sports sports gun. It's like, it's a f***ing flamethrower. <laughs> Understandably, the, uh, the elite back off briefly until Nicholas Jackson goes, oh, I'm not having this. I'll go at him with a chair. Uh, but Danielson drops him and uh, sends him through the table. And understandably, the rest of the elite don't really fancy this. And Danielson stood there like, come on, I'll see you on Sunday. And Darby Allen just maniacally spraying the flamethrower around, going, let's go. And that's the end of the show. And I'm like, cool, when's uh, it's all double or nothing? Where to start? Where to start? Obviously, the flamethrower in itself. Oh, you had a flamethrower. That's the extent of the take. It was great. You saw it. You should watch it if you haven't. You can't see anything else. Nicholas Jackson after taking the table bump was great because he realised the bruise was forming. So he was like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny like, bit like, yeah. hey, look at this!" It's like really good instincts, and then like he probably hammed it up by going, "No!" And yeah, really good. Like, the, the, just watch it; it has to be experienced. You can't art take it. It's a flamethrower. <laughs> On Satnam versus Danielson, I'd be lying if I said I felt a great deal for it, and I'd be lying if I said it met these like woefully unrealistic, like expectations of this career triumph, I've solidified objectively my case as the GOAT because I had a 12-minute four-star match with Satnam Singh. Probably never going to happen. I will say that I had a good time with it. Yeah. And I will say also that Brian Danielson didn't just do the things you're meant to do with a bigger wrestler where you're selfie, where your best stuff can get swatted away like you're a fly with a chest job and, you know, you create the movement and all of this stuff. He chose so many, well... It was like four minutes, so not that many. He chose a few um, spots and like the blocking of it and where he put himself, like the hammer and anvil elbows. Like I'm just in the rafters yeah. doing it down, or like various other little moments where it's like he is making himself appear uh, tiny mm. compared to Satnam Singh. Just these little choices that he made, where it's like you were always reminded at every single possible moment. And it's not just David versus Goliath. It's like. Ten Goliaths. The application of the bell lock. Stacked like, on top of each other. It like, looked like one of the kids playing in a soft play with those like wacky waving inflate. The, the limbs were so big to grab. You just cannot like, dive in. It's like, yeah. like, <laughs> like an Ewok attacking a stormtrooper. That's why I got vision. I'm like, fucking up some of that, you prick. <laughs> what happens in Star Wars? I, might I don't it. know. <laughs> you might have seen a different version. <laughs> yeah. I might actually have to give this a go. Trek, which I want is, isn't it? But yeah, I just thought, I was just, like you say, when he's just like, what the hell? Look at this. Little house pressing the plane buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I like the finish too. There was a little um, for the DQ. It was the uh, like the Will Washington fact. Yes, on the top of I saying, saw that. Never been beaten on television. Still never. So you yeah. have preserved the weird old giant who can't do much, but look what he does do. Which I'm all. In, I like weird old giants. I'm a great Carly guy. Like I like like Andre the Giant for all these can't do almost anything in that like late WWE run. Still fun to watch him try, yeah, yeah. and you just buy it. And mm-hmm. bonk, Massive bonk <laughs> hits the deck. Fine, I 100 percent buy that. Do not get bonked on the head by the huge guy. Yes, love it. Flamethrower. Andrew Pollard uh, sent a great. I think he's tweeted it as well at Cultured Left Peg on X of uh, the Simpsons Darby Allen crossover, which looks class. <laughs> come Cross. on then. Well, not come on then because you'll kill them, Darby. But okay. it, it, uh, well, let's. His training stinks son as well. I was. I heard him. Oh, right. Right. yeah. Let's tease how, if, and how the flamethrower will be used in Anarchy in the Arena on the Double or Nothing preview. It's just good Eddie wrestling. And spirit lives on. Well, this is it, right? It's wrestling promotion. Last week, we said it earnestly felt, all credit to Eddie Kingston, like an upgrade. Like, oh, God, we've lost him. And you, you have that worry that, like, they're going to throw in a mid-card. It's not going to feel. Mm. Darby Allen immediately. Yes, that's the person to put in. That's that the flamethrower illustrated that. Mm-hmm. Don't worry that you're not going to feel what you were going to with Kingston because 
is the, the, the upgrade from that. It's that. That's how you should promote a replacement. Mm. And the fl- a flamethrower is part of that now. <laughs> flamethrower yes, does yes. that job perfectly. Yeah. Uh, well, let us know your thoughts on the flamethrower and on the whole uh, Go Home Show for Double on I think the, the Dynamite episode. Either in the comment section below or on Eeks at What Culture WWE. Where actually, they can follow all three of us. You can follow Michael Hamlet at Michael Hamlet. You can follow Michael Sidgwick at. M. Sidgwick. You follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas. And make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. Um, and me and Sid, as I said, we'll be recording a double or nothing preview coming out in the next few days as well ahead of Sunday's pay-per-view. Oh, by the way, a bit of boring admin. I keep forgetting to do this, and I will. And there'll be reminders all over socials and stuff. But... There's a bank holiday on Monday here in the UK, so it's going to bugger up all of our recording schedule. And there's King of the Ring, so our Double or Nothing review will be Wednesday before the Dynamite preview. No, oh, Wednesday? Yes, because Tuesday we'll be doing the normal stuff, i.e. Raw and NXT and King of the Ring. Why's that got priority? It's going to be sh- um, Just because it happens before, basically. Not yeah. just well, because, it's also it. because. We'll get mm. before. Yeah. Don't uh, like that. Only so much gold for one week. But we will also, yeah, we will get around. I apologise in advance. B team? <coughs> no, I'm not. But we will get around to it eventually. No, you're not. That's the product you currently prefer. Mm. Is. Right. Uh, this has been the Dynamite Review, though. My thanks to Michael Hamlet and Michael Sidgwick. Thank you for joining Just us. Just drop an XT no, preview. Definitely. Never. Christ, uh, enjoy Double or Nothing. We'll see you soon. Sensible pitches only.